Madam, forgive me my boldness, but I feel I must speak. I've been hiding my feelings for more than a week. What you do to yourself, it is simply not right. You lock yourself in here all day and all night. The delight you once took in everything fair, you've replaced with this most unbecoming despair. The cook has run off with the maid to pick fruit. And the cats in the yard are giving frantic pursuit to the birds who all flap and fly off to the sun. While you hide away in this house like a nun. You've cloistered yourself here for almost a year. It's not healthy. It may be your ruin, I fear. I shall stay in this house for the rest of my life. An honorable fate for a dutiful wife. If it has been a year, I have only begun. Thus, husband and wife shall forever be one. And yet more of your nonsense. I will not hear a word. Your husband, God bless him, is long since interred in the family too. God has given him rest. Must you hang on him still, be forever depressed? When my darling wife met her untimely fate, I wept for a month, put myself in a state. But then after a month, I could not shed a tear. Put bluntly, she just wasn't worth it, poor dear. Go and visit the neighbors. Throw a party. Have fun. You never go out. Nor let anyone come. If to live like a cockroach, afraid of the light, was your aim, then, dear lady, you've done it all right. Someone turns on a light and we scurry away and the mice running loose in the pantry all day. It's not like there's not lovely people around. Down in Riploff, the soldiers, every one of them sound as an ox. Charming, handsome, and young. There's a ball every Friday. There are melodies sung. If you dressed in your finest and fixed up your hair, you'd be a sensation. Un found populaire. But do it now, dear lady, while your beauty is still able for in ten years' time. I shall go set the table. Do not speak of these things to me ever again. I'm not of the living. You provoke me in vain. Since my husband's demise, life is nothing to me. Though I seem to be living, I am not. Do you see? I shall show him the faith he denied me in life. It's no secret he was often unjust to his wife. Or the lying, the cheating, the coming home late. Yet despite all of this, I shall not hesitate to be faithful to him to my own dying breath. I shall lead by example, and shall do so till death. Madam, you know and I know that this is just talk. We both know you'd rather go out for a walk in the garden or saddle up Toby. Oh. God, am I stupid. I'm afraid I must go. He always loved Toby, and he rode him so well. He was never so handsome as when he'd compelled clear across the estate. <gasps> that magnificent horse. Luca, double his feet for today. Yes, of course. What's that? It's the door. At this time of day? It's 3.30. Never mind. I shall send them away. You shall see, my dear Nikolai. How a wife can forgive. I shall be faithful to you for as long as I live. I shall show you what love and devotion should be. I shall shame you, you bastard, just as you did to me. There's a man here to see you. He says he insists. Did you say I'm in mourning? That I don't receive guests? Yes, I did. He pushed past and refuses to leave. <gasps> what a nerve! Oh, the language. It's hard to believe. He's a wild man, a brute, a boar, and a bear. He came in and sat down on your late husband's chair. Show him in right away. 
We shall see about this. Ring the doorbell. Barge in. Be abusive. Insist. I wish that the world would just leave me alone. This house is a tomb and no longer a home. Get your hands off my coat, you stupid old fart! Mrs. Popoff, how are you? Allow me to start with my name, my rank, and my position in town. I'm a gentleman, madam. There's no need to frown. I'm a landowner, a farmer, and a soldier of fame. Grigory Stepanovich Shmernov's my name. I hate to be rude, but the matter can't wait. What is it you wish? Your late husband's estate has defaulted. You see, I'm owed quite a sum. We were friends, he and I, so it's sad that it's come to me barging in here and demanding my due. Just 4,000 rubles and I'll bid you adieu. I've got bills to pay, madam. I've got debts of my own. The bank told me straight when they gave me my loan that if just once I was even the slightest bit late, they'd foreclose on me and sue me and take my estate. It's the interest, you see. And in order to pay, I'm afraid I'll need what you owe me today. This 4,000 rubles, just what was it for? He bought oats from me. <gasps> Luca, and I told you before about Toby's still applies. Give him double his bill. If my husband owes money, I assure you, you will be repaid. But I'm sorry. You'll have to wait till morning. My accountant arrives around eight and will write you a check. That is all I can do. I'm sure that will be of assistance to you. Now, if you'll excuse me. I feel far from inclined to discuss your accounts. So please. Do you mind? Assistance? Inclined? What the hell are you saying? I have wolves at the door and the mongrels are baying for blood. If you don't let me have what I'm due, I'll be ruined and the blame will lay squarely with you. In the morning, come back and I'll happily pay. I don't need it. Tomorrow, I need it today! Well, I don't have the money I told you before. And I heard you! Well, try not to be such a bore. So, I take it that that's your last word on it, then? Do not doubt it! Why, thank you. You're welcome. Again! I'm expected to stand here and take this abuse! A man in the street shouted, What's your excuse for looking so worried? And I said to him, why should I slap on a smile when my pockets are dry? I'll be bankrupt. I feel like a gun's to my head. I don't want to foreclose. I'd rather be dead. I've been doing the rounds for a week and a day to get one of the bastards who owes me to pay. When at the last, I, I find myself here and I think, Mrs. Popov, she'll give me some cheer. And what do I get when I claim what I'm owed? Excuses and insults and that stupid old toad. I really can't think what you want me to do. I feel I've addressed your concerns. Don't you? No, I don't, as it happens. I demand my amends. You can shove your account in. And that's where it ends. I refuse to remain. You are vulgar and crude. Bloody women. And they're bloody impossible. 
possible moods. So that's that. While she mourns for a husband long dead, I struggle to lighten this price on my head. God, I mean, no move for gains, damn it. But what's to be done? Should I pack up my bags and go on the run? Should I pull out my pistol and blow out my brains? And let the bank's vultures wolf down my remains? I call in on Grishchev. I'm told he's not in. Erosovich hides, I fight with Kazin, Mustov's dying and now Popov has moods, and not one of them pays! I need to intrude with more violence, it seems. I'm not hard enough. I whine, I play easy, and I never get tough. I've spoiled them. And they think that that gives them the right to default me? Well, damn it, that all ends tonight. No more tricks, no excuses. To hell with them all. I won't budge till she pays me. <laughs> oh, her evasions will stall. <laughs> I could do with a drink. Hey, sir, come here. No more favors. I'm determined. My purpose is clear. Did you want me? Bring vodka. In a trough or a glass. Yes! Bring it! They insult me at every pass. God, I'm at gunpoint. I, I, on the edge of a cliff, if you will. And you think that she'd see that and give me my fill, but oh no! She's offended. I'm vulgar and crude. Because I won't curtsy, she's not in the mood to pay up. Hmm. Wow, that's terrific. Feel free to forestall. I don't get it. Do women have logic at all? This is why I don't talk to them. Who needs the stress? If there's logic at work and they're wearing a dress, you can't win. Bloody. Women, they drive you insane! You'd be better off putting a gun to your brain. My lady is ill and will not receive guests. Well, of course. Run along. Right away. It's a test of my patience, a trial of the wits. If that's that, I will fight just as hard as this mulish young brat. <laughs> I won't receive either. I will sit here and stay till she pays me my money and never give way. If she's sick for a week, I'll be waiting right here. I shall sit here and stay if it takes me a year. As God is my witness, you will pay what you owe with your grief and your impulse. Don't think I don't know what you're playing at, miss. It's perfectly clear. Pull the car around and park it. We're staying right here. Then go and get some food from the kitchen round back. Oh, they'll feed you. Don't worry. I promise you that. I'm exhausted. I'm hot. And I'm broke. And now this. The headache. She has moods. Where the hell is that piss? Hey, servant! You called me? Is that drink on its way? Yes, of course. It's still coming. Oh, oh not good. Oh, it's quite the bouquet. I'm not quite the dandy all covered in shit. I look like a brothel. No wonder she quit and went off on her own. She probably feared that I'd Rob her and kill her the way I appeared. <laughs> it's fair, I suppose. And she thinks I'm a thug. 
it's a dressed like I am and expecting to slug her for 4,000 rubles. I'm not blind to that fact. But I'm here for the money. There's no time for tact. For the purpose at hand, what I'm wearing will do. You are shamefully bold. What the hell? Oh, not to you. What the hell did you say? Shut your face, you old fart! Well, that worked. <clears throat> Up to you. I gave it a start. You are kidding me! What kind of house am I in? I'm, I'm so angry, my stomach's beginning to spin. It's, it's appalling! There is simply no way to express how insulted I am! If you wish to address in a civilized way the account you came to resolve, then you may. I must say, just the same, that during the year since my husband's demise, my life here has been altogether comprised of quiet and calm. I am not predisposed to the shouting and cursing you have rudely imposed on my servants and I. Since you will not desist, you must leave here at once. I'm afraid I insist. Give me the cash, and I'm out of your hair. I told you before, and I think I was clear, that I don't have the money. Come back in two days. Only then will you get what you're owed. <laughs> oh, you amaze me, you know that? Because I seem to recall that I said something too. It was only a small thing, but it was clear as a bell. And I think, I think, what I said was that without what is owed me, I'm better off dead. Yes, but what can I do? There's no money here. Don't lie to me. I am completely sincere. Then I'll wait. If in two days I'll get what I'm due, then for two days I'll wait. And I'll wait here with you. Hey, do you think that I'm joking? There's simply no way. Mr. Smirnoff, I beg you, I'm not your chauffeur. You'd certainly give me respect if you were. <gasps> In any case, don't be so stubbornly shrill. If you want me to leave, then give me my fill. You astonish me, sir. You have no social grace. Yes, I have. You do not. You are vulgar and base, not to mention ill-bred. Every gentleman knows how to speak to a lady. You do not, and it shows. Oh, excuse me! How should I speak to you then? En français, de préféré? Oh, excuse me again for disturbing your peace in this hideous way. What splendiferous words can describe this array that you wear? Such a dazzling visage. Oh, madame, you're a goddess who simply can't fail to disarm. You're not funny. You're vulgar. In decorous, at least. What I am is unschooled in the female caprice. More women have passed through my life than you think. More women for me than sparrows that drink in your garden out there, so don't think I don't know. I have dueled more than once as a passionate bow. This old heart has been crushed into roasted debris, and I've scalded a few on my own, believe me. I have used honeyed words. I have sacrificed all to the plenteous beauties that held me in thrall. I have loved. 
I have sighed like a bard to the moon. I've been tortured by women till the walls were festooned with indulgences that were fueled by the madness I fed with my lust. And that's all that can ever be said for the beast that entangles us all in its snare. I was promised delight. And I was given despair. I have squandered more cash than I care to recall. For my sanity's sake, I gave up on it all. I will not be led around by the nose anymore. You can pack up the weapons you use in this war. All your dimples, your lips, and your glistening eyes. All the pledges you make and your hesitant sighs. You can throw them away because they don't mean a thing. Not you, of course, madam. I don't mean to fling this at you. It's merely a rundown of women I've known. They're exhausted. I'd rather be left on my own. Tell the truth, Mrs. Popoff. In all of your days, did you ever meet one who was worthy of praise for her faithfulness? Did you? I don't think that you did. If she's old or deformed, she might put in a bit to be trusted. Someone as good as a word. But the truth is, you'd sooner find horns on a bird. May I ask? Go ahead. If, according to you, the most treacherous beast, the most deeply untrue, is the woman, who then is the second to none? The most faithful of all, not the man. That's the one. <laughs> oh, the man. Yes. The man is an idol of trust. It's a miracle. I'm afraid that you must think me stupid, or there's simply no way you'd suggest such a thing. My late husband was one of the best men I knew. A remarkable man I adore, with a passion that only the young can afford. I gave him my youth, my devotion, my heart, not to mention my money. Yet, right from the start, despite having pagan-like awe thrown his way, he betrayed me in thought and in deed every day. When he died, I discovered what in life he'd concealed. When I opened the drawer in his desk, it revealed many letters of love he'd written in life. Do you know that not one was addressed to his wife. His unfaithfulness knew no restraint, it would seem. In town, here at home, no deceit too extreme. While his wife stayed at home and was spotless and chaste, he was playing the field and our marriage debased. He would spend all my money. He would lie to my face. He would toy with my feelings. And to my disgrace, it would seem I absolved him of every sin. What is more, I maintain my devotion to him. For although he is dead and has been for a year, my commitment to him shall remain without peer. The vows we exchanged I shall keep in my heart and be faithful to him till I also depart. <laughs> Do you think that I'm stupid? Do you think I don't know that this game that you play is purely for show? You lock yourself in, then you sit here and wait till some dashing young knight gallops past your estate. Then he'll gaze up in awe and he'll think to himself, there lives the young widow, that bedeviling elf who, to honor her husband, has imprisoned her love. <laughs> oh, I can see that's one conceit you're not above. What obnoxious illusion are you trying to make? Not so crippled with mourning that you're not able to cake on the lipstick and makeup. How dare you suggest? Do I look like your servant with the screaming arrest? I'm not screaming at you, you are screaming at me. Unlike
like you, I call things as I see them to be. So don't scream at me because I figured your bluff. Please leave me. I beg you, I have had quite enough. Cough up the cash and I'll be on my way. I won't give you your money. I don't care what you say. Won't give me my money? Not a copeck, not one! Since I've not been exposed to the marvellous fun of being married to you, would you be so polite as to lower your voice? It's not quite a delight. Will you sit? Way ahead of you. Once and for all, will you leave me in peace? The longer you stall, the longer I'll stay. Pay your bill and I'll go. I have asked you to leave. And I have answered you. No. No? No. You leave me no choice. Show this man to the door. Kindly leave here at once. You are welcome no more. Do you want me to batten your nose, you old fart? Oh, my God. I can't breathe. And I can't feel my heart. Where is Dasha? Pelagaya? They're all out for the day. I need water and air. Leave this house right away. Don't overreact. You're a monster. A bore. Now, hang on. You are crude and beyond immature. How dare you just hurl these insults at me? <laughs> Do you think I am so Scared, how butty, please. You wearing a dress won't deter me, you know. You'll be dragged over coals for these insults you throw. Oh my God, give me a drink. Satisfaction, madame. Do you think your thick neck and your um, muscular arms make me scared? I don't care. I won't wear your abuse. And being one of the Weak sex is no damn excuse. You're a filthy, malodorous, insufferable boy! If you women demand to be equal in law, then the code of duello must also apply! Let equality reign. I will not let this lie. So, you want me to do? Yes, I do. I assent. My late husband kept pistols for just this event. I shall kill you, you know, and then dance on your grave. I hope you don't think that your beauty will save you from me. I'm no child. I will treat you the same as I would any man who's insulted my name. Sir, I, I beg you, no more. Would you please go away? I, I am not built for this. This is a perfect display of equality. This is what justice should be. And I'm a woman is not an acceptable plea. We've evolved, have we not, from our prejudiced past? There's a principle here that we have to stand fast. I shall kill you, you know, and then dance on your grave. She's a woman with spirit. Her eyes were ablaze. Oh, what a wench! She's a match for the best of them all! She didn't back down from my challenge at all! I implore you to leave! This is no ingenue. She's got character, this one. Audacity, too. Be a pity to shoot her. Still, it has to be done. I am begging you, please. I've located the guns, but before we begin, Will you show me what's what? I've not handled a gun, nor fired a shot. Oh my God, this is mad. What a dreadful fear. I've got to get help. Not to mention some air. Well, 
You've got several kinds here, and they're not all the same. These are dueling ones here, and they'll do you no shame, but these fine little numbers, now they're works of art. They'll cost 90 rubles, and that's just the start. Now, here's how you hold them. Oh, my God, but those eyes. Like this, oh, you say? Yes. You take the hammer and prize it back so. Tilt your head. Stretch your arm. Then at the last you can fire. Place your finger like this. Not too fast. If you don't lose your cool and you slow down your aim, if you're steady and slow, you can win at this game. I think that the garden would suit this affair. Yes, it would. That way I can shoot in the air. You do what? Why not? Just because nothing more. <laughs> You're afraid, Mr. Smirnoff. You open the door. Do not think you can flinch now that combat's begun. Come away. When you're shot in the head, we'll be done. Unless you're afraid, I will not brook a truce. I'm af I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. No, you're not. Really? What's your excuse? If you must, it's because, well, I like you, all right? You're repulsive to me. Get out of my sight. I know you're upset. And I know I'm the cause. But it has to be said. Why the hell do I pause? The thing is that, well, what I'm trying to say, it, it, but is it my fault you owe me? I like you, okay? I'm in love, I think. Out! I insist that you leave! By the gods, what a wench! There can be no reprieve for me now. I'm caught like a mouse in the snare. In my life, I have not. I will shoot! I don't care. I will joyfully greet this ferocious demise if it comes gazing into your beautiful eyes. If the gun is discharged by this delicate hand, I submit to its rage. I obey its command. Make your mind up at once. It's all up to you. If you want me to leave, it's forever adieu. I have horses and land. I am healthy and clean. And I'm frequently praised for my elegant mien. Will you marry me? No. I will shoot. Go ahead. What is wrong with me? Servant, bring water. I'm dead. I feel like a stupid young boy with a crush. I will say it. I love you, and I hate all that mush. I'm in love as I never thought I could be. All the ones that I dumped and the ones who dumped me, they all pale when compared to you. God, I'm a fool. I'm conquered. I'm lost. I forfeit the duel. Be my wife. Oh, the shame of submitting to love. I've had five years of bliss, and I've thanked God above. But I'm trapped, and my abstinence flies out the door. Will you marry the man you profess to abhor? Do not go. What was that? It was nothing. Get out. But I... No. No. Go away. I just buy 
Those who, you, you, blout? Oh, if you knew how incensed you had made me today. Oh, my fingers are numb. Well, go on, go away. I shall go. Do you have to? No, go. Wait. <sighs> I'm so angry. Don't go. Uh, oh, yes, do. Oh, I hate how enraged I've become by this faltering girl. On my knees like a boy. My resolve has unfurled. I'm insane. I'm in love. God, this is just what I need. I have interest to pay and my crops are in seed. And you come along. God help me for this. Get away. Get your hands off. Don't think you can... Oh, my God. Tell the stable hands. Go. Right away. Tell them Toby is not to have oats for today. <laughs>